Okay, this sermon is entitled, A Stupid, Wasted, Sorry Life. I'd like to open up with a prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 38 reads, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of thy sin. Now I'm preaching on the subject of basically people that are just wasting their lives away, living for nothing, and I'm speaking to both lost people and saved people. There are lots of Christians out there that live for nothing as well, and it's a sad and tragic thing. Now let's turn over to 1 John chapter 2. In 1 John chapter 2, we have some verses that make it very clear that the things of this world are not worth anything. It says in verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So what we see here is that whenever a person is just worldly, they're basically getting ripped off. Because the things of this world are not going to last forever, whereas the eternal things of God are going to last forever. Now let's take a look at some more verses that describe people that are just living a stupid, sorry, wasted life. Turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter number, let's see chapter 9. Let's take a look at a couple verses here. It says in verse um, 3, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. Now what this is telling us is that this this characterizes, this epitomizes somebody living for nothing. Okay, they're living a life of evil, a life of madness, and then they just die. And then in verse 5 it says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Now, it's really foolish to live for nothing, considering that every person knows they're going to die someday, and we have no idea when. So if you know you're going to die, why do you want to live a wasted life? You know, on secular things. Why do you want to live for nothing? Why do you want to live a life that's devoid of, of, of God? and devoid of any meaning. Now let's take a look at another verse on this. Turn back to Psalm. Let me find the verse. I'm doing this completely ad hoc. Psalm 30 basically tells us that, you know, we're here to serve God. We're here to praise God. And it's a totally profitless life to not praise God. Let's take a look at verses 8, and we'll stop at verse 12. It says, I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in, in, in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Now stop right there for a minute. When we look at this verse, we basically see a couple questions being asked. He's saying that, what's the point of life if all I do is just die and I don't praise God? And the answer is there is no point. Okay, what profit is there in my blood? In other words, what, what's the point of my life? When I go down to the pit, when I, when I die, shall the dust praise thee, shall it declare thy truth? In other words, no, it's not. The dust isn't going to praise God. You know, I had my chance to praise God in this lifetime, but I blew it. Okay, now jump down to verse 10. Okay, hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Now, that's what we should be doing. We should not be silent. We should not just do nothing with our lives. We should be praising God, we should be giving him glory, and we should be doing it, you know, all the time. So, the Bible encourages people living for God and not just wasting their lives away. Turn over to Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, we have an an exhortation on how we should live. Start off with verse 1. And I'll stop with verse 3, and it reads, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Now, 
What we see from verse 1 is that he's talking to believers only. The only people that are risen with, with Christ positionally are those that are saved. He's not talking to the unsaved. See, unsaved people have no purpose in life. Okay, these stupid atheists out there, they, they have no purpose, no point, and they're going to die and go to hell. Their life's a big waste. So an unsaved person's life should be characterized by sorriness and wastefulness. But a saved person should have some meaning in life. Okay, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. He's saying, don't be like these sorry people, don't focus on earthly things, but set your affection on things above, focus on spiritual things, things that have eternal value. Now let's turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 we have an example of, of people that actually lived a life that meant something versus those that, that did not. Let's start off with verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now stop right there. Now, if a person goes out and you know preaches the gospel, or, or goes soul winning, or maybe they just go out and they just do what the Bible says in some other area. Maybe they praise God. Maybe they just start singing the hymns. They 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 live their life, you know, with with meaning in terms of um, you know godliness and spirituality. That person will receive a reward, an everlasting re- reward. Now, for all these lazy, sorry people out there that do nothing. Maybe they sit around and watch TV all day, or they just, you know, listen to a bunch of stupid music, or they just focus on the things that are right in front of them, all the, th- the empirically examined things of this world, those people are going to get no reward. They're going to lose reward. That's why it, it, it describes the results as in two different groups, okay? Gold, silver, and precious stone. Now, we know that all three of those can go through a fire and survive, but wood, hay, and stubble are not going to survive. The fire is going to you know, conflagrate them. They're going to be completely incinerated. So that's why he uses these two groups of, um, of, of, of substances. Okay, We ought to be shooting for gold, silver, and precious stones and not be like the world or be like the lazy carnal people that are just going to have wood, hay, and stubble. Okay, Watching TV all day. Okay, What's that amount to? Nothing. Wood, hay, and stubble. Being lazy, being sorry. You know, just being wasteful and, and profligate, wood, hay, and stubble. So that's why, you know, we need to be diligent and assiduous in this lifetime and start pursuing the things of God and start serving God. We should set our affection on things above, like we just read in Colossians chapter 3, and then we will get rewards based on, you know, what we did. Now, let's take a look at one more verse and then I'll close. See, it's not even, it's not practical to live a sorry, wasteful life. It's not even beneficial. You're not even going to get anywhere with this. Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, it says in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What he's saying is that we should be focused on the things of God. We should seek, you know, godly things first, his righteousness, and then God will provide for us. See, the world has it all backwards. The world thinks that we need to focus on our needs, focus on our problems, and then we, and we are the answer. No, we need to focus on the things of God, we need to seek God and seek his kingdom, and then he will give us the things that we need. So that's pretty much all I have. I'm just encouraging people not to be, not to be lazy, sorry, and stupid, because when this life is over with... I mean, that's all you're going to be remembered for, if that's how you lived. And it's going to be a real sad and tragic thing. When a person, I'm talking about saved people now, and they they go to heaven, and they just miss out on a bunch of rewards. It's a tragedy, and that's pretty much all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very important subject. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.